This is gonna be the battle of the vintage dual quad intake manifolds. You know that I love the tunnel ram. I want to love the cross ram. We're gonna find out which one is easier to tune and makes better power. Before we get into the details here, let me tell you exactly how we're gonna do that. We're gonna run all of this stuff on that 383 small block Chevy that you've seen on Engine Masters a zillion times. In this case, it's basically just a test motor to show you what these things are gonna do. And we're gonna baseline this thing with another vintage style intake manifold, the Edelbrock Victor Jr. You can still buy those brand new all day long, but they were designed quite a while ago and they've got small ports for the early cylinder heads as these do as well. So it's kind of a fair comparison of an older style four barrel versus the older style dual quads. This is my personal favorite. I just love the tunnel ram. Let's talk about why it even exists. Cast your mind back to 1959. There was a group of Chrysler engineers called the Ram Chargers that built a car called the High and Mighty. And these guys during their daytime job had been experimenting with really long intake manifold runners. You've seen those Chryslers that are big old cross rams like this, like the Plymouth Sonoramic. It's got one carburetor on the other side of the valve cover over here and another one over there, big long runners. What they knew is that long intake runners make torque. Shorter intake runners make high RPM power. So knowing what these guys knew, they made the very first tunnel ram intake manifold on that high and mighty car. Basically, an intake with a bunch of radiator hoses running up to a log with a couple of carburetors. Now, it worked. The exact manifold that we're using here is a Wyand High Ram. Unfortunately, they only recently discontinued this for the small block Chevy. Wyand still sells them for big block Chevy and Mopar and a few other things but not the small block Chevy. What you still can buy brand new is the Edelbrock TR1Y, which if I'm being honest, is actually a better intake than this, but I had it, so it's what we're gonna use, and I love it. But to use this intake, you gotta cut a hole in your hood nine times out of 10. So the question is, can you make the same performance with a cross ram that will fit under the hood? We're asking that question with this box ram style intake manifold, which is an Edelbrock STR10, made way back in the day, long since discontinued, although you can buy a similar Offenhauser these days. And it's a direct knockoff of the GM factory intake manifold that they offered as an in the trunk option for a 1960. Camaro Z28. Now, why would the manufacturer build something like this? Once again, long intake runner length for mid-range power. <clears throat> the downside of the tunnel ram, perhaps the only one, is it's heavy. I'm really impressed. At what? At how you lifted that up there just like you were 25. The next thing we're gonna look at here is the air fuel ratio in each individual cylinder. And because we've got a tunnel ram with one barrel of the carburetor right over the mouth of one opening, we're gonna be able to look at it and find out if we can change the jetting in the carburetor to affect the air fuel ratio in that particular cylinder or the ones nearby, the ones on the roulette wheel that are sort of sharing with that one. <laughs> I don't think the roulette wheel is as big on this. Well, let's look and show people the outliers. There you go. That's the lean guy right there. Number six is not having a great day. The rest of these are actually pretty good. I guess uh, number two is a little bit of an outlier as well. Pull the carbs. Okay, so next up I'm gonna go grab those carburetors and put them on the cross ram while these guys are removing the tunnel ram. Well, one thing I can do with great precision is drop an intake manifold. Okay. Bolt her down. I don't know what you saw, but our mind was blown already. <laughs> It, it, was, uh, it was pretty decent. Can we look at the air fuel distribution before we look at the power? Okay, how does that happen? That's better than the tunnel. <laughs> look at that pairing right there, that I grouping. It's, it's all a little rich, but it's really, it's within a ratio, basically. And that's with the jetting and the air bleeds all over the map in those carburetors. Yeah, because we figured, well, we've got to work on them anyway, so let's just 
start. And well, apparently it's identical to the tunnel ram as far as jet requirements. Well, except for this guy, <laughs> yeah. number three. But I maybe that's got a accept. really lean jet somewhere in the corner that doesn't really want it. See, because we just plop those carburetors yeah. right on there with jets all over the place. Yeah, that one might have the number 63 in it, but like, how do you know which jet is reaching that cylinder? Because that's number three. I was looking at that intake and I thought the corners were gonna be garbage. Number three is directly under a Venturi, directly under that one right there. But we don't know what the jet is in that particular hole. I'm gonna say what jet is in number three and put everything there. Because all this is rich, that's actually okay. And so you're trying to bring all these up. Yeah, and that one. So down if that a has bit. a 67, maybe we put 67s, put 67s in everything. and everything. Oh, you're saying this is the happy cylinder, and these guys are chubby. Yeah. 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 So go ahead and put these on a diet and let that one like stay eat the alone. Pizza. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is take every bowl off and take every single jet and put a 68 in it, which is five steps leaner than these carburetors came with to begin with, and we'll find out what happens. That was pretty good. <laughs> this, I, I'm 100% I'm wrong about everything about this intake manifold, at least on this engine. It's the fog of fuel. It is the fog. So basically, it's almost like the fog is in the plenum and then different cylinders are just getting a nibble. Right. Right. Yeah, once it takes its turn, it goes Yeah, there's then no. Then the next guy goes Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your opinion, please. Let's look at air fuel. I don't want to look at power yet because I'm already blown away by the air fuel. I want to look at power later. Ooh. Ooh. Much tighter and no big outlying cylinder. The range here is 14 to 12. Uh, this right is here. just one at the end. Well, I'm looking like right here. Yeah, right yeah. here. That is, it's literally better than most of the modern single or dual plane single four barrels. It's really surprising. How is that? So in conclusion, what do we actually know here? I think we know that the Victor Junior is the wrong intake manifold for this engine. It only made power above 6,000 and yeah. it was a mess compared. It, it wants a performer RPM with a one inch spacer. Is this the, RPM right, range. That's the right single four barrel for this engine. Second of all, what do we know about the tunnel ram versus the cross ram? The I cross ram looks cooler. It looks way cooler, but does it make more power? We need to look at that. Well, we're about to find out. Yep, so this is gonna be a comparison of the tunnel ram versus the cross ram. Mm. And now we know that the tunnel ram is a better unit. So the red lines are tunnel ram, the black lines are the cross ram. They are remarkably similar from 3,300 RPM all the way up to when the torque and horsepower cross over at 5,250. And above that, the tunnel ram takes over. You can justify it with power, but not with good looks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's not like you're talking about gobs of power because the difference between these two manifolds is nothing compared to the difference of either one of them compared to that single plane we tried earlier. Right, exactly. So. The other thing I would say is straight out of the box carburetors, I don't know if you recall, but the tunnel ram did not do this. The tunnel ram was worse than the cross ram yeah. initially. Only once you stagger jetted it to death did it come up to this point, meaning your average guy who's driving around with it without 802 sensors in his headers is never gonna get there. And in that case, if you're not gonna tune the thing so expertly, the cross ram was actually better down here. Yeah, it actually was. The thing that was really odd about all the stagger jetting that we did is the average air fuel ratio was basically the same from 3,500 up. Yeah. Where it picked up all the power below 3,500 is where the air fuel ratio changed. Mm -hmm. So going back to what have we learned, Victor Jr. is wrong. Tunnel Ram is always right. Yeah. <laughs> and the Cross Ram is pretty good as long as you never want to make peak power. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to see more of those. More Cross Rams yeah. out there? You know what the problem is? They're so hard. Stupidly expensive. Stupid expensive. There's no price on good looks. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> so what you're saying is? You, you look, look marvelous. marvelous. <laughs> when I look into my own cross ram, I, I look, look marvelous. marvelous. <laughs> exactly, because it's all about good looks with this crew every single time on Engine Masters. <laughs>